Once you've looked at your data and designed your model strategy and your annotation strategy, uh, figured out how you're going to do with data privacy and security and plan your user experience, then you're ready to begin implementing your system. Uh, in this phase, you'll get ready for production by running any final training and testing of your model and moving it into a scalable production environment. We will be concerned with monitoring your model performance and understanding potential failure modes, uh, among other things. Here, I'm just calling this productionize your model. Which really just means making the model that you developed in a sort of testing environment in the design phase more uh, available and reliable and robust uh, as part of your production system and available for your, your end user application. Uh, and then as you're ready to put your model into the production environment and, and iterate and integrate your model there, you'll be at a stage where you're able to, to do end-to-end -to -end testing. Um, so look at everything in your system um, from one end to another in, in terms of data throughput, um, model monitoring and, and reliability systems updates and, and user experience. For the project that I've been describing about maternal health in Nigeria, uh, the model we used was a, a very simple single layer model that we'd originally developed at Edibon for industry applications, retrained for this specific use case and the, the languages, metadata, and structured, unstructured data that we had access to as part of your report. In the system that we designed for this use case, one of the requirements was that the annotation had to be done by the staff in the clinic. This was for a couple of reasons. One was that they had the expertise. Uh, they'd already been working with these messages and, and a third party it might not be so accurate. And just as importantly, it was for privacy reasons. We didn't want to employ additional people who'd be able to see the personal health information of the, the people being supported by your report simply for the purpose of updating a machine learning model. Conscious of the, the time it would take these healthcare workers, the way this worked was that for a very small number of tasks, like language detection, uh, they were performed in a very almost automated way by the model because they were highly accurate with a back off where someone got something that was not in fact in language they spoke. They could quickly manually reroute that. Uh, in other cases, humans were reviewing model predictions, but with a focus on predictions where the model was uncertain. So we would raise more particular use cases where a model could not make an accurate prediction, uh, not say what the model predictions might be, and then and ensure that the manual annotations still took place there so that we weren't in any way biasing the output by having too many incorrect model predictions. Uh, for any project that you're working in, to complete the implementation phase, you need to be able to answer yes uh, to two simple questions. Is your model performance acceptable? And are the end users able to successfully use your system? It's possible you realize that there are problems with your model performance or usability of your system during the implementation phase, and you will need to return to the design phase and work out those problems. In our case at this stage, now after months of work, we had developed our models, integrated them with user experience, and tested the whole system with the staff at the clinic as end users. The model performance was acceptable, and we could show we were continuously improving the model performance, and in turn, continually improving the overall volume and response speed of the clinic staff, even though they still had to manually review and categorize some portion of new incoming messages. Uh, and so with that, we're ready to go live and deploy the system. In reality, the project I'm talking about here is just one example of the, the many possible designs and implementation phases that you might have uh, for any project that utilizes AI. Uh, your particular project is likely to involve a whole lot of technical challenges uh, related to things like system uptime or low latency predictions or retraining time and a lot of other factors about uh, I guess practical real world AI problems uh, that typically aren't part of more theoretical or academic focused AI courses or the, the kind of labs that you're probably used to. And so we won't be addressing uh, these kinds of problems here in detail, um, but I do want to highlight that they exist. Um, and if you're interested in being part of uh, a group of people that deploys real AI systems, um, then I, I do strongly recommend that uh, you also get an understanding and, and an experience of the kinds of problems you face in deploying any kind of technology at scale. The important thing for you to focus on in this program is the big picture about going from the problem definition that you identified in the exploration phase to the evaluation of the project on through the final phase. You should, at the end, still be able to evaluate your project 
in terms of the problem definition that, uh, that you initially set out to do. Uh, and so this is the evaluation of your results and the user experience of the people who are using and getting a benefit from the, the system that you've created. So please join me in the next video where we'll wrap up this lesson uh, with the evaluate phase of this project.